Hi there, and welcome to the Love or Leave the Law podcast with your hosts, Adam Olette and Casey Berman. Hi, everyone. Casey Berman back for the Love or Leave the Law podcast with my uh, co-host and partner, Adam Olette. Say hello, Adam. Hey, guys. Welcome back. Hopefully you've watched the last episode. It was a very powerful and really important information. If you have not listened or watched, however you're taking this in, please go back and watch, uh, listen to episode 14. It builds, uh, this episode builds on that. And um, if you haven't listened to the uh, insight uh, on beliefs, it's a good one too. So uh, we appreciate you being here. Now, I was just going to say that. Please look at the last episode, uh, listen to it, watch the video. Um, we talk a lot about uh, limiting beliefs, which we're going to get into in more detail now. But last episode, we really talked about kind of uh, helping uh, how we can help ourselves even to come to terms with the fact that there are limiting beliefs out there. For many of us, uh, we won't believe it till we see it. We won't believe it till we have evidence of it. Um, but nonetheless, there's still these lingering doubts and beliefs we have that hold us back from being happy. Um, so there's a real good exercises in that episode. In this episode, we're going to talk about these limiting beliefs and what they are and give you real tangible um, uh, ideas. We're going to kind of do some Iraq and issues about what they are. And then uh, I'm going to grill Adam on on how we can view these and how we can mitigate or reduce these. Before we get in, Adam, though, can you tell everyone um, the best way to listen, the best way to view uh, the the podcast? I know we're on iTunes, we're on YouTube, but maybe maybe refresh everyone's memory um, how best they can do that, and also get some good uh, some good other tips from us. Well, depends on how they want you want to listen to it, everybody. If you want to listen to it on iTunes, we're on iTunes, and you can stream it audio. We record these in uh, video as well. You can watch them on YouTube. Uh, the links are um, on the when you come into Leave or Law Love or Leave Podcast dot com. Um, those will be emailed to you as they're released. And um, you can watch us on YouTube. If you go to my channel or Casey's channel on YouTube, just put Adam yeah. Oled in or Casey Berman. The videos are on our uh, channels as well. There's loads of ways to check us out with this. There's also transcripts if you sign up um, on the Love or Leave podcast.com as well if you want to read them. So we're trying to give yeah. you this information uh, however you want to bring it in and, and uh, utilize That's it. That's right. Yeah. Lots of ways to uh, listen, view, or read about what we're talking about here. We're on a mission, um, and I mean that sincerely. We are on a mission, Adam and I, to to uh, help you become happy, help you refresh your practice, uh, refresh yourself, or even leave the law. So let's dive in. Uh, we spoke last time, and Adam, assuming there's an attorney out there, uh, many of them are like you and me, where they only listen to evidence, they're only empirical-based um, but assuming they're able to quiet their mind and start really believing that they've been programmed in a certain way, they have programmed themselves in a certain way, they've got these beliefs that are kind of holding them back, right? Assuming they're able to be open to exploring, which is one of the goals of, of helping our community, what are some of the beliefs that attorneys um, have that are very limiting, that they get in the way of either really uh, empowering themselves to succeed in the law or really get in the way of them looking to explore alternative careers? Well, these beliefs we're going to talk about today are really uh, collective beliefs that most people, human beings, have issues yeah. wor- with. But we're going to take them and we're going to turn them into, okay, how can attorneys understand that they have these beliefs and then uh, you know, the shifting beliefs, it takes some work, as we said in the last episode, and there, there's a lot more to it than we're, we're giving you in this. But one of the things we want to teach you in this episode, episodes, is just understanding the big picture, right, Casey? I mean, this is one of the, the yeah. things we talked about when we were planning this episode was, what are the big picture problems, beliefs that can be limiting in people's lives that cause them not to 
attract, to uh, have what they want in their life, to live the ideal life. And so we're giving you kind of like the 50,000 foot view. Um, Really where change occurs is the uh, five foot view. It's in you and you doing the inner work, which we will talk about more later. Um, And the deep dive really, you know, is in Esquire Academy, my book and Casey's um, uh, love, uh, leave the law uh, contents has, uh, we have a bonus in there, right, Casey? If somebody buys yep. your program, we have I spill the beans in the bonus on there. Uh, it's that right. that video I recorded is worth uh, hundreds of dollars. It's it's good yeah. stuff. It, oh, it's been phenomenal. But we, so many people already. But here's the thing: we're going to give you a lot of that stuff through this podcast, regardless. You want a deep dive? Go into our stuff. But we understand that these beliefs are what hold people back from loving the law or even looking at leaving the law. And that's why we want to cover these. And so let's jump in. One of the main beliefs that I find uh, in people and a lot of the lawyers I talk to, I've had these limiting beliefs. You've had these limiting beliefs, Casey. And that the, the main thing is that we're not worthy of what we want. We're not worthy of really loving our career. We're not worthy of making the kind of money we want to make. We're not worthy of anything we really are looking to to move towards in our life. And why is that? Well, this is a collective belief system that has occurred, and it is really grounded in the Judeo-Christian. I mean, I grew up Catholic. I'm not anymore. Casey grew up uh, Jewish, and the Jew, and you know, we are polar opposites, but those two communities are the majority of this country as of the United States. And um, there are others, but when you look at what the collective beliefs are, Judeo-Christian beliefs are of the Adam and Eve and the original sin, that in itself, when you pop out of the womb and you're being told that there's some problem... (laughs) And that That's Christians right. believe you have to be baptized in order to remove it. How can you tell me a baby has this when they come out? I don't believe that. Right. But, but the thing is, we have to look at why are these beliefs in the collective. And that's part of it, is that people started believing that there was something wrong with human beings yeah. from the minute they were born. And as a result, even if you don't think you believe this, it's a part of our culture. It's a part of our community. It, There's no getting around that. And so when I started looking at, well... Do I feel worthy of making this kind of money? And that was a belief that was holding me back from really making the kind of income that I wanted and having the life that I That's wanted, right. working the kind of hours I am, that I wanted. You yeah. know, you'd say, I am not worthy of uh, making more than $112,000. Um, for me to think about making five hundred grand is just crazy. For me to think about uh, working from home is just crazy. Like, I am not worthy of it. It is not. It, and it just... It, it, it boggles our mind. And I know when I ask people through Leave Law Behind, I've, a lot of clients, I'd say, how much money do you want? Let's talk about money. Forget law, forget everything. Right. Well, I'd love to have 100 and 150 grand, 300 grand would be blah, blah, blah. And I said, you know, if you make, if you have $8 million, 5%, if you have $4 million, 5% return, let's say you invest it conservatively, 5% return on $4 million is $200,000 a year. Could you live on that? Well, well, sure. But yeah. thinking of having $4 million in the bank, it, they're not worthy of it. It doesn't even cross their mind. They're yeah. programmed to think a lot less. And it's something that um, we, you know, lawyers calling themselves a fraud. They're not worthy of partnership or not worthy of this. And it's something that in real life, you know, goes back to the Adam and Eve story. But it's something that holds us back um, every day. Yeah. And we, a lot of us don't. Well, most, most, not a lot. Most of us don't know that this is here. Everything we're going to go through with you today, you probably don't understand that it is there as a limiting belief because you don't ever think about it. You never look at this stuff. And this is part of the process here is to uncover what's there. Until you understand that there is stuff there and it can be uncovered and changed, you just keep living the same life, wondering why you aren't moving in the right direction. And unless you... Uh, take the time to ponder this and then implement it in your life, a lot of things don't change. People will, they're born, 
they get to the point where they're they're in their working age. They usually will, in the, especially in today's age, they'll stay in a career that they hate. They don't know any better. They die never knowing that's right that any of this is a possibility. And that's the sad part about most people's lives. They live a life of quiet desperation. That to me is that's sad. Right. Casey and my mission is to help awaken people to the That's fact right. that there is infinite possibilities for everything in your life. Infinite possibilities. That's the way I see the universe as being created. And this is how quantum physics shows us that there is infinite possibilities based on what we believe. So if you believe you're unworthy in any way of a, an amazing relationship, of perfect health of a certain yeah. amount of income you have to understand that it is those limitations in you that are holding you back and i always talk about well you have to align what is in your greater good what is in the greater good of all of us the collective right. and then look at what is something that you can manifest that you can change that you can be worthy of and as a result, when you look at all those things, people come to me that I've coached and they'll say, well, I'm not making the kind of money I want to make. Yeah. We look at the unworthiness part of it. Then we look at what are yeah. the beliefs around money. Do you believe you're worthy as an entrepreneur or a business person? Because all of us yeah. are business. We're in business. I don't care if you're an associate in a big firm, if you're a partner, you are in business for yourself. And we've talked about this. So I'm going to keep re reiterating it to everyone because it isn't that important, but you have to feel worthy of all of it in order to allow it to flow to you. Now, there are some people that grow up and their mothers beat it into their head that they're the best, they're beautiful, they're amazing. We could all be so lucky to have those kinds of mothers. My mother was middle of the road. I think, Casey, your mom was middle of the road. She didn't understand yeah. this. My mother didn't really understand this, even though she was well, we learned a lot more about it as I was growing up and taught me some of it. Like, she taught me I played college basketball, and well, even in high school, she taught me, visualize the uh, ball going in the basket. So, you know, I had some trouble with free throws. I wasn't bad like Shaquille O'Neal, but I was having a little trouble with free throws. I could shoot a jump shot all day long, and I was a very good shooter for being 6'9". I was a really good shooter, and I would love to shoot threes, but I was just too big. So I played center, but she would say, visualize the free throws going in the basket. Practice in your mind. And that's yeah. part of how you shift beliefs is visualize the end result and start to feel it like it's real. That will bring the beliefs up. So unworthiness is something that is in the collective, is a problem. It's hard to yeah. pinpoint unless you start to do what we're talking about. Look at what is the ideal in your life, whatever that is. If it's money, if it's health, if it's relationship, whatever that is. Um, but, and I see people that have the practice, they don't like practicing law and they say, you know, I am not worthy of a law practice. They don't say the unworthy word, right. but it's essentially what they're saying. That's the, I'm yeah. unworthy of a practice that, um, brings in a lot of money. Mm -hmm. I am unworthy of a practice that is really automated and makes me happy. I'm unworthy of a practice or I'm unworthy of really good clients. And the flip side of that is I'm just stuck with kind of a ho-hum practice. I'm grinding it out. I'm hustling. I don't like my clients. And so the idea is like this is a belief that people have is that they just need to be bogged down and hustling in the grind as a lawyer for 30 years. And what we want to say is that you know, when you really, when you're able to open your mind, you can say, no, that's just a belief that I have that is keeping me where I am. Yeah. And as you start to put your attention on your intentions, how much money do you want to make? What kind of life yeah. do you want to have? Um, what kind of firm do you want to have? How do you yeah. want to, uh, how much vacation time do you want every year? All of those things, when you start to yeah. think about them and you start to become aware, as we said in the last episode, yeah. Becoming in the and more aligned with the present moment, right now. What is now? Not the past, right. not the future. What is right now? And you start to focus in on what your ideals are. You'll hear in your mind what you believe. But the thing is, Casey, yeah. this is kind of interesting. 
whatever is occurring in your life right now is a mirror to what you believe. That's right. a big one there. That's that's something that it's you hard can... for us to grasp that because we have to be accountable for it. Um, we don't have to blame ourselves and give ourselves a bunch of guilt and and so on, but we do have to be accountable for the fact that what's in our life right now we've created, we visualize this, every we bit of it, asked for this, and every bit of it, and 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 we've created it. Well, people will say to me, uh, clients co- that I've consulted with, uh, coaching, life coaching people uh, that I've worked with, they'll say, "How could I have created a foreclosure?" How could I have right. created this illness that is unbearably awful? And right. the the response is by your beliefs. That's all there is yeah. to it. You have something in you that caused this. Now I've had, and you know this, Casey. I've I've experienced some issues with irregular heartbeats and stuff like that over the years. That I I look back and say, where did this come from? Yeah, and. I have shifted out 95% of that. Now, there's some still granular stuff in there that I'm looking at that I meditate on, that I visualize on, and that is will be shifting. But I looked at it and I said, why would I create something like this? This is not fun. And it's it, it was debilitating because I believed it was. And it was for me, it yeah. really came down to uh, it was a fear of dying. That's all there is yeah. to it. It was a fear of dying that my heart's going to stop and there's nothing wrong with my heart. I'm strong as an ox. And it, but I started thinking back to where did this come from? And I started doing some automatic writing on it. And then I got it. I got it. People in my family would tell me, oh my gosh, you look just like your grandmother's brother. Well, this guy died at 35. <laughs> and this guy was not yeah. as tall as me, but he was bigger than me. I mean, I'm 290 yeah. pounds. He was 300 and something pounds. He could, now these are stories from my great uncles. They say he could lift a, a, the, a car off the ground. This is as big, this is a farmer, right? A big worker. But um, he died of some problem with his heart. I don't have that problem, but, oh, you look like him. Oh, look, this. look at this picture. You're yeah. built like him. You sit like him. Yeah. And as a child, we talked about children and, and formation of yeah. beliefs. As a child, I'm hearing this, oh, he died from a problem with the heart. It dawned on me. I took that in unknowingly, unwittingly, believed it. Oh, you're like him, so you're going to have heart issues. And I just, I was, it was a revelation to me. I'm like, there it is. I said to myself, how and why would I create this? We don't understand a lot of why we create things in our lives because the beliefs come from years and years of perspective and and our life as we've talked about and there's a lot more depth to this conversation yeah. but understanding that a lot of what you believe you don't know where it came from and it really doesn't matter now i was well, on a mission to uncover and well why and you know i this is my brain I, you know this casey i love to research stuff and i yeah. want to know things from my own edification but really you don't need to know where it came from because it doesn't matter it is a belief so Whatever's happening in your life right now is yeah. a mirror to every belief you have sure. about life in general. So one, let's move on to the next one belief. Example, oh, go ahead. Yeah, the next one around life being hard. You know, one example of that I that really hit me over the head recently was no pain, no gain. Mm. Um, you know, that is a belief we hear everywhere, uh, particularly, you know, here in America, at least. And so no pain, no gain. Um, I get it. Work hard. You don't want to be lazy. Lazy is bad and so on. But also this idea that if you're not hurting, if you're not up late at night working, if you're not stressing, stressed if out, you're right. not stressed out, if you're spending time with your family yeah. or if you're working out or somewhere, you're not working, therefore you're too easy. Like I, it dawned on me recently that no, life doesn't need to be hard. And as a matter of fact, the people who are top sports athletes, who are top uh, actors, who are extremely wealthy, they've worked out a system where life is easy for them. Yeah. Um, they've got money coming in through recurring revenue. Uh, Tom Brady just throws the, you know, he's in a zone and he can yeah. make it look seamless because they get into a part where they they don't believe it needs to be hard. They actually believe that it can be easy. That doesn't mean it's lazy. Doesn't mean they, you know, so how, tell 
tell me more about your thoughts on this belief that we've been indoctrinated to think. And I, I know there's many people listening right now, nodding their heads going, oh, my God, I, I've li- I grew up with that, too. But give me some ideas and thoughts around this belief that life needs to be hard. There's no gain without some sort of pain. What thoughts on that? Unless you grew up with a silver spoon in your mouth and you had all the money you could ever spend, the majority of us did not grow up that way. Yeah. Um, you may have had middle-class parents who worked jobs and um, the likelihood is if you grew up with a lot of money, you're not listening to us right now because you're not even a lawyer. <laughs> I mean, right. But when you look at how people have lived for the past three, four or 500 years, um, my parents worked hard for their money. My dad worked for the airlines. My mother worked for the airlines. And then she became a real estate agent. They worked really hard to make a living. And for the majority of my childhood, uh, you know, we had a roof over our head. We had an okay house. It was clean and we had food. But you could see the struggle uh, making ends meet, right? There's a big one. This is a big one in the collective in that uh, yeah. life is difficult. And that all runs downhill to everything in our lives, our career, money, health, uh, relationships. Relationships don't need to be hard. People make them hard because they don't yeah. open up to the fact yeah. that the relationship can be what you want it, but it takes some input. It takes some awareness, some attention. I hate to say the word work, but because work is connotated as, oh, it's bad. And you know, this, yeah. is a, this is another belief system we'll get into at some point down the road. No, but, but you know, Adam, on relationships, my wife and I always laugh when you see it in the movie or TV show where the, the couple are in a fight and then they slam the door and leave. And we always say, what? just talk it out. Yeah. Like, you, just talk it through. That's you'll it. come to a resolution That's and you'll fall back in love. Right. Like, what are you doing? Why are you leaving? But, they, you know, they're programmed to think that it's hard. and it, Well, it and, and people, people in general want to avoid confrontation and, you know, but sometimes confrontation is, is the best way to work out issues. And yeah. I think there'd be a lot less litigation if people just sat down and yeah. talked about it. Because as I talk so how about, do we, yeah. go ahead. Adam, how do we view that life? How do we get to this point and feel good about, not feel lazy about, but how do we feel good about that life should be easy? It, there well, should be ease to it. For me, it's about the intention around my life. How do I want to set up my businesses? How much do I want to work? How much do I think I need to work? Because, you know, like I had a, my partner that I've talked about, he believed you had to be in the office, you had to work all day long, every day, you had to work as more or harder than everybody else right. uh, in, in the office. And lots of people talk about this. And even one of my favorite authors, Brian Tracy, you read some of his books early on, and he talks about working harder and, and being in the office. and it's, That's a belief. And I, I didn't yeah. buy into that. I'm reading this book, and I'm like, this is bullshit. I don't, I don't want to do this. Yeah. I don't want to be yeah. in the office working six days a week for 12 or 15-hour days. I did it. Now, I did it, Casey. I did that shit. Man, it yeah. really took its toll yeah. on me. Yeah. And then I, I started learning about this, and I'm like, well, how much do I want to work? How can I leverage uh, other people to do the stuff that I don't want to do? Yeah. How can I make a great living? And it came down to, I believe life was hard. I believe that I had to do it. And then when I said, no, I don't want to believe that stuff. Yeah. What do I want to believe? Life is easy. Life flows. Uh, I make money easily. I can have other people help me to do the things that I don't like to do. And I can focus right. all my attention on the stuff that I really love. But it is about intention. What are the ideals that you would like to create in your life? And then That's right. figuring out how to move towards them by looking right. at what you believe now at, and what needs to change about those beliefs and then what you need to, f- what feels good about the end result and then focusing attention there. Most of us don't do any of this stuff. Most of us will, they'll, you'll set goals. You know, we're coming we're recording this podcast. We're coming into a new year in the next couple of days. People are setting goals and they're buying exercise equipment. And, and then two weeks from now, the exercise equipment will get stacked with clothes <laughs> and right. the planners and the goals, they never look at it. And so as I'm studying this years ago, I'm like, where's the disconnect here? Why yeah. do people not create intentions and stick with them? You know, one of my intentions a long time ago was to lose weight, and I had ballooned up to about 400 pounds, which sounds a lot, but if you would have seen me in public, you would have looked at me and said, like most people did, oh, do you play football? When I was in law school, I was 
around 400 pounds. And, you know, the stress of law school didn't help. And, and people, I went to, um, I was at Michigan State at their bars hanging out and people thought I played for the Michigan State football team. I was fat. I mean, that's all there was to it. I was just fat and, and smoking no less. I mean, for God's sakes, you know, and, yeah. but I was like, okay, I want to lose some weight and I lost some weight and what it was, was about intention. What were my habits? Yeah. I didn't know about beliefs then, so I started making these changes. But then I started learning more about beliefs. What did I believe about food? Well, beliefs around food in my family were you look at a piece of cake and you gain weight. Well, that was only part of my family because everybody said, oh, you look like your mom's part of the family. Well, my dad was skinny. My sister was skinny. Everybody attributed her skinniness to him. That's bullshit too as far as I'm concerned. But when you look at intention, intention is the powerful force in your life that you aren't paying attention to. Right. That is the key, is intentionality. You know, know, the problem that people will run into, so please focus on what Adam just said, saying, you know, I want life to be easier. I want it to flow. I want to be in the zone. I want to, uh, you know, visualize things coming my way. Um, It, it, I do it. I do it every day. I struggled with it, but I am proof that it, I'm, I'm in the process myself. The problem is with people who are not making that intention to hear you say life is easy. I want it to be easy. I want it to flow. They're going to look at you cross-eyed. They're going to think you're conceited. There's all these doubt that they will provide. And so I just want to say that there, it, it's easy to say to do it. It's also you want to start doing it. Um, but please don't let those who are still listening to the limiting beliefs um, you know, limit what you're doing. It, it can be difficult. Um, it's lonely. A lot of what we're talking about can really be lonely because uh, a lot around you aren't doing it. I'm lucky that Adam and I have found each other uh, and we've been able to build uh, the businesses we're building on this. My wife is in alignment with me. Um, but there's also other people in my life who are like, Casey, you are different than you were in high school or college or before. And part of me says, yeah, you're right. I am. Yeah, so I, I yeah. do want to throw that out there that it, it, as much as we're talking about here, um, do not let the, the, the others out there bring you down. Yeah. And when people say to me, I don't believe that my beliefs create my reality. I said, right. yes, cause that's what you believe. And right. I, so then, then what I'll say to them is, okay, what challenges are you having in your life? And they'll say to me, money, health, relationship. Those are the big three. And I'll say, okay, what are the struggles you're having with money? Well, I just don't have enough. Right. And I'll ask them, do you believe money is hard to come by? Do you have to work really hard for money? And I hear a yes and a yes. And I'll give them the questions that I have in the Raising the Bar book that I give everybody that I do coaching with. And I say, go through these and answer these for me because these are going to tell me where you're at with your beliefs. And as, you, and as I start to go through this with them and then they, they, something snaps in them, they go, oh, oh man wow, okay, I was resistant to the idea to begin with. Right. But all right, now I see it. Because people don't want to admit this to themselves because it's, it's like um, when people started watching The Secret, uh, there was a lot of people poo-pooing it. And yes, it leaves out a lot to be um, implemented. There's, it's not the whole picture, but people poo-pooed it because they could not believe that that was it. That was just too easy for them. And that is a limiting belief. If I hadn't been through this in my own life, in every single area of my life, and implemented it and did exactly what I'm saying for you, you know, giving you the processes for this, the very beginning processes, I wouldn't be here talking about them. You know, losing 100 pounds and making the kind of money that I've wanted to make as a lawyer and driving the nice cars and having all that stuff and then having the ability to then work three or four hours a day. That's all I worked for the last few hours, about four or five years I practiced. I worked three or four hours a day. That was it. And when I told um, some attorneys that that's what I was doing, they're like, how can you do that? Well, because I knew it was a possibility. And when you know something's a possibility, 
then you can start to figure out how it becomes a possibility. And when you create an intention and you sit down every day and you do the inner work and you visualize, then you start to find people, places, things, books, coaches that support you. This podcast is one of them. If you're listening to us right now and you've gone this far with us in this podcast, we're here because you needed this information to help you change right. your life. And so That's that right. is where the disconnect is for most people is that they, they want an instant solution. They don't want to do the inner work. And anybody knows that if you've changed anything in your life, that it takes some time. It takes that inner process to move forward with it. And so if you're not yeah. willing to look at what you believe and uncover some of this stuff and then start to figure out what is is it that you want to believe, then shut this podcast off. Don't listen to any more episodes. Don't get don't subscribe to our lists and, and get the videos from us because you can stay the same. We're okay with that, right, Casey? I mean, yeah. I'm okay with everybody staying the same if that's what they want. I'm here to support people moving forward in their paths. And there are a, a, a very small percentage of people that will do this inner work and you and I are one of them and that's why we're sharing this message because we know how important it is absolutely I mean I I think that you know this is something I've talked because I get a ton of emails through leave law behind about doubts and should I do this or Casey I just want uh, I'll, I want to do your coaching, but tell me about the job and I'll say, talk about the work we do. No, no, no. I don't want to do that. I just, can you get me a, a job? And I, yeah. I don't want to work with people like that. Well, um, you, they, they want a simple answer. And the problem is sometimes life isn't simple. It doesn't have to be hard, yeah. but things sometimes aren't simple and people want it done for them. But the, the problem but with that, let me, let, yeah, go ahead. And, go, and the, the, thing, the thing that, that the beliefs I've had, let me talk about two beliefs because they want real life proof. Two beliefs for me that happened was that you've helped me with. One was I've always thought of leave law behind or I did before, before it's become the business that it is now. But leave law behind was a small blog. I just wrote about it. People liked it, but I would just write, you called me out of the blue in October of last year. I want everyone to know that Adam had been reading me for a while on leavelawbehind.com and was compelled at a certain point in time to call me and say, hey, man, we have to work together. I remember looking at the phone going, I don't know who you are, right. thanks, but no thanks. And But we kept talking, we kept connecting, and I opened my mind because what you started talking about to me was what we were, ta- what we were talking about earlier about unworthiness. I wouldn't have used the word unworthy, but I thought Leave Law Behind would just be this small blog and just sort of go on writing forever. And where it's gone now into the big community is, the product I've created, uh, the membership site I'm about to launch, um, and all the stuff that I've been doing with Leave Law Behind, you know, you have helped me really realize this is more. The value is there. And as you've done that in uh, since since we've been meeting, I've received so many more emails. I've received so much more business, um, so much more money when it comes down to you want a metric of performance, right? And so I really think the success of Leave Law Behind has been due to the conversations you and I have had that, Casey, you've, you've literally held me by the lapel saying – there's more to this. You have to realize. And this belief of unworthiness I had was holding me back. And I've really mitigated, if not totally extinguished, that belief that leave law behind was just a small little thing and it wasn't, you know, something big. And so I, I the fact that um, I had this belief and I didn't even know yeah. I had it. I was actually happy with the idea that, yeah, I just write this blog. It's nice. It shows I'm a writer. I feel really good about it. And people write me emails saying how much they like my stuff. I didn't know I had this belief that to take leave law behind any further, I, I, was, I felt I was unworthy of it. Well, the beauty of what you've become and your work is that whether they've hired you as a consultant or they bought your course or they're in your membership site or whatever, just the fact that you're putting yourself out there and that you're writing these articles, there are people that have emailed you that have said, Casey, just based on this, I took the leap and I want to thank you for what you're doing. And so this is part of why we're doing all this because that's right. People's lives change when you open up, to the possibilities. And so, yeah. you know, I, I've told you once, I've told you a million times, and I'll keep telling you that the work you do is very important. And if you are part of this community and you are considering leaving the law, 
uh, you need someone to help you. And I've had coaches, a lot of coaches over the years help me in so many ways um, that I can't understand how someone would not have a coach if you really needed to have help in the transition out of a major life event or even building a business or any of those things. Yeah. I, I've spent a lot of money on coaches over the years, and I could tell you that it's money well spent uh, yeah. because without working with people and listening to new ideas and reading books and all of these things, we are stagnant. And who wants to be stagnant? And so Let's wrap up this episode. We've probably um, got a couple more episodes on this based on our outline, yeah. Casey. So the next episode yeah. is going to be on money, money beliefs right. and abundance. Um, and then we'll go from there and we'll see where this takes us. We have our outline and we just talk and teach and uh, hopefully you're getting a lot of stuff out of this and we hope you're growing with us and part of our community. Now, if you want to be part of our closed Facebook group, uh, go to loveorleavepodcast.com, and in the email, uh, I'll ask you if you want to be part of that, and you can shoot us an email back. We'll have someone add you to that uh, private group. It is private. Nobody else can see anything other than the people in the group. The questions you're asking, you can ask questions of us, um, relatively simple questions, um, yeah. and you can be a part of this community that we're building with this podcast. So I invite you That's right. to do that. And I invite you to come back to the next episode and every episode after that because we have a lot that we want to share with you. So, Casey, yeah. why don't you take us out of this episode? Adam, thank you. Thank you for letting me thank grow you. you. Um, we're going to keep it up. Everybody, these uh, uh, beliefs that we have, we're going to tackle money next. But, you know, today we talked about this belief that we're unworthy of anything greater than what we have now. Uh, we've talked about a belief that life is hard and that, it, you know, if it's easy, if making money is easy or living your lifestyle is easy, then there's something wrong. You're lazy or you're, or you're just not doing it right. Or you're going against your, your religious or moral uh, beliefs. Right. And so um, please take these to heart because a lot of this is uh, translated and really influences what we do day to day, how we uh, treat people around us, how we treat our kids, how we think about staying at the office later. And you know, if you're staying at the office later, you're not seeing your kids, you're not working out, um, you're not getting the sleep you want. And these little beliefs um, extend the time that we're working and ultimately really have an effect on, on whether we're happy or not. And Adam has been a huge help for me uh, over the past year, year and a half that we've been working together, it's been really hard for me. I'll tell you guys, like meditating and having him push back on me on believe that. No, I don't believe that. Adam, you're wrong. I don't believe that. And then we'd hang up and I would walk around and mope around going, oh, God, I do believe that way. So I know it's going to be hard, um, but I can tell you that it, it's a process and it's something that a lot of people are not going through. But if you come with us, if you listen to this, if you start practicing this day to day, uh, it, the possibilities are really endless yeah. for you to uh, to be happy, uh, to be full of confidence, and really to kind of create a life that, that we think is worthy for you. So I'll get off my soapbox, but um, again, we're so happy to have you be part of our community. As you can tell, we are we just are so passionate and excited about talking about this. Uh, would love any feedback or questions from you, uh, but please check out the next episode uh, where I'm going to grill Adam on what are the limiting beliefs we have about that topic of money. Yeah. So thank you all. Adam, anything thank I missed? You. No, that's it. We'll see you guys soon. All right, guys. Thank you guys. Bye-bye.